Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, you are watching the Steinway Classic 2014, the third annual. I'm Upstate Al. I'm going to try to get some co-commentators to sit in here with you and keep you company. If not, I'm staying at the helm. We're about to watch these two players as they lag for the break. Shane Van Boning on your right using the six ball and John Moore using the ten ball on your left. See Shane go at it as he wins the lag. Before we get at that, we got to thank some of the sponsors. Lacasse Cues, Lacasse Hybrid, Gotham City Technologies, your IT guy, all your computer needs, networking, you name it, building websites, GothamCityTechnologies.com. We also want to thank FA Clothing Line, Brian Russell and uh, Jonathan Russell, his son that's on board. Alongside azbilliards.com, the world's largest website for pool and billiards. Simonis Cloth, the largest in the world supplier of billiard cloth, along with Aramith Balls. The Kings of Vapor, the Tap League, and live stream news group on Facebook. We want to give a big shout out to Steinway Billiards here in Astoria, Queens, New York, for holding this third annual and going to continue. Um, it's going to get close to 14,000 added next year. And just to let you know, at the end of this month, we'll be heading up to Providence, Rhode Island for the Eastern State Championships at Snookers. Steve Golden, Regina Golden, great host. They're going to, three tours are coming together. You have the Predator Pro-Am Tour, which is Tony Robles and Gail Glazebrook Robles. You have Ride the Nine Tour, which is Gloria Jean. And you have the New England Nine Ball Series, which is Mark Dion. All three tours coming together to bring back the return of the Eastern State Championship. It's going to be a big event. Put it on your schedule if you want to play in that. 2008, uh, 2000 added to the A, B, C, D. And 3,000 added to the Open Pros. Shane Van Boney set the break up. Game one in this race to nine, a B-side match. We want to thank our... Co-producers of the show. NYC Grind and the Predator Pro-Am Tour. As Shane Van Boning breaks them apart. He's got a shot on the three. The best 10-ball break in the world. And we want to welcome Snooky Diana Rojas back to the booth 
Thank you, thank you. He does you. a wonderful job every time that uh, we are in town. Great commentary, and we love to have her aboard. And uh, I don't like to sit in all the time. As much as I enjoy it, I like to put other people in. And uh, John Schmidt said that he would come in if he had a chance, and Earl said he would come in. So, you know, as the tournament starts to dwindle down uh, and players get eliminated, it's possible that we might have Jerry Tarantola step in and do some commentary. But, that'd be, uh, that, a, that'll be nice if we can have Jerry come in. He's, uh, okay, we're, we're, we're talking with Jerry. And, no, we have a f in a few minutes, we'll have Jerry come in. Jerry's into a the busy beam. beaver. Yeah. And so is Shane. He's got a chance up at the table. Going to play safe here. Mm -hmm. It's a small five ball. He's got to get him caught up behind it. He hit mm -hmm. it with great speed. And we'd like to give a big shout out to everybody watching the event. Uh, we do appreciate it. All proceeds do go right back to Steinway Billiards, Upstate Al, and AZB. Do not profit anything off of the pay per view, which I find is reasonable. Absolutely. You know, and, uh, going it takes back a lot to get this production going, going too. Back you know, and we yeah. definitely appreciate it. Going back and, to Steinway. Uh, and definitely for those, uh, for those people who are uh, at home. Um, watching uh who otherwise wouldn't be able to come to this event live can actually watch and enjoy the uh the show <laughs> yeah i'm loving it now i do expect shane to uh to to come back strong I, I know that uh, he did have his first loss. This is a uh, this is on the one loss side already, and so uh, Shane, having lost to uh, Jeremy Sosi, I'm sure that he was eager to get back in or get into his next match, and so we should see some uh, pretty powerful play with these. Bo both of these players are great. Now Shane has been been here uh, all week, and uh, been practicing on these tables and uh, something obviously very important to to do if it's possible. Not all of these players were in town to do that, but uh, you know definitely shows a dedication um, on on his part um, that he uh, that he took the time to come here uh, and spend the whole week. Uh, feeling out the tables, feeling out the room. I mean, he has been here before. This is not the first time he's been at Steinway Billiards. But uh, like I said, he did come this week to uh, feel out the tables. So um, you do see that he uh, has gotten the speed of these tables down and uh, has done everything that he can to, to, to do what he has to do. Yeah, you know, it, it doesn't take Shane too long to get used to a table no matter what country he's playing in must be nice but you know <laughs> but you bring up a good point you know that all the tables have just been redone that they're playing on and it takes you know you got to get out there and hit balls to get used to it absolutely, absolutely no and i, and I was are. just telling the folks at home that the, the, he came this week he's been here all week yeah. filling out the table yeah. so yeah. Uh, uh shane very obviously dedicated to his craft and uh and it shows obviously yeah they call them a computer when they first started the tournament they had a players auction they were calling him a, him a computer just rack the balls and run out mm -hmm. makes no mistakes and we all know what a powerful break he has and that was a very good example of it look how the one ball dressed up and one ball beautifully dressed up in the corner a nice five ball dropped on the break now, do you think he goes for this 2-10 combination to end this quick? Or does he come back across and play the two in the bottom right-hand corner or on the side? Well, getting position, I mean, he now he's got to fade the seven, which is not really a problem. But getting to the to the long rail on the opposite corner, on the, where he's standing, to get between, between the, the six, six and the four, four yeah. to get that combination for the, for, uh, for the two. And even if he falls short, he still has the two in the corner. 
So look, he get he got he there. got behind all of that good and job. and went for the two. See what I mean? So either way, uh, he's doing good. All he had to worry about was bumping that four and, and cue ball on a string. Absolutely. That's what it looks like. And he stunned that that three ball. Over. He got straighter on this than he wanted to. He wanted to have a little more angle so he can play the four in the side pocket. Right. That four is lying uh, slightly above the sli the side pocket. So he's got to put a little uh, a little grease on this ball. Okay, uh, Al has been pulled away from the, the booth for a second, so um, at the moment I'm left in the booth myself, uh, but I will uh, do my best to verbally entertain you. <laughs> uh, again, he did get straight on this ball than he may have wanted to because that four ball is lying above the side pocket from this angle. Um, He's got to put an effort to to get up there. Wow! He got on the short side of this floor and still in good shape. Still, you know, he's got a, It's a cut shot. It's not straight in. Just got to go just above and come back just as so. And he should go down to the rail, bottom short rail, and back up towards the six. I mean, I'm sorry, t uh, back up towards the seven. Uh, I just took a peek, I guess, at the ten and make sure he doesn't hit that. Oh, he decided to slow roll. See, he was, if you can see that he did go towards the ten, and that's probably why uh, he took a peek and he did slow roll. It still had a beautiful shot on the seven and uh pops it over just as so okay um i'm just gonna introduce jerry tarantolo who's just joined me in the booth and will be exciting to hear what he has to say about this match welcome jerry yeah snucky thanks thanks for having me it's a pleasure to be here i'm excited i don't know about you but I'm, I'm excited are you this kidding is me great. this is this <laughs> is the best i yeah. love this yeah uh, we you know we've been talking over and over about uh how many people are here spectating and you know like i made a joke about it saying that like a can of sardines here um just uh you know a packed house and so uh, Uh, just one second, we're going to fix the score. Yeah, my bad. Excuse me. I was making a score. I, uh, uh, I was changing the score. I changed it the wrong way. Yeah, I put you the, did. put the one on the wrong side. My bad. I'm going to do it right <laughs> now. One second. You're fired. No. <laughs> yep. I'm sure, I'm sure John would like that one yeah. there at the moment. Yeah. But, uh, okay, so now we fix the score. Uh Two zip. And a Shane race Van nine. Boning, baby. I mean, I love seeing Shane Van Boning here in New York. Right now, we have uh, um, a really good matchup between John Moore and Shane. I mean, just look at his break right now. It's one of the strongest breaks in the world, if not the strongest, most dominant break. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is the American player to beat, would you say? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. There, there are others, and uh, obviously more capable. Uh, I mean, capable of beating him. Uh, this is a one loss side match and he did lose to uh, Jeremy Solsey who played pretty much flawless apparently. Uh, what I heard is that he, we interviewed Jerry a little earlier and he said that he missed two balls and missed one bank the entire, uh, the entire set, which mm -hmm. is pretty strong. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so we, let's just update that real quick. So three zip uh, and a combo, a 2-10 combo, making that rack 
uh, quick a rack, right? Yeah, a, a quickie. A quickie. A quickie on the feature table here at Steinway Billiards in Astoria, New York, Queens, New York, my hometown. And uh, Snooky, this is your home pool room, right? This, this is, is your home room. This is my home room. Nice. I love it. <laughs> well, I can only imagine that you're like really loving the excitement here with so many great players coming through. Oh, here. absolutely. I enjoy it at wherever, I, you know, I I do my traveling and I go out to see some of these big major tournaments uh, in other parts of the country. Um, but, you know, knowing that this time I hadn't, I, I didn't need to go on the road or something to go watch them and they're here. It's wonderful. Yeah. Um, and it's, it just, gives the opportunity not only do the people who, who who can't take those trips um but now we have the the online and their people are are watching at home um whether they're here locally maybe they can't make it out to the room but even people across country uh, all, all over the world who can sign in and and watch these players um it's it's fantastic but uh, i do enjoy seeing uh you know, these guys just battle it out like this. I've I've always been a fanatic of of seeing that. Yeah, awesome. He's trying to see if he can. But he's calling the one between. He's calling that bank. Wow, the between one, the five between six. Between five six. How strong is that? Wow. He actually banks it short. Now, John has the option of giving this back, uh, but I think he, I think he's happy at being at the table, uh, even if he doesn't have a, a great shot right now. But he does have the opportunity to play safe. I don't think he wanted to double kiss, too. I don't believe he wanted to double kiss. And I, I'm i surprised he didn't try to tuck that. If maybe he did, uh, he tried to tuck that behind the 5-6 uh, there. Uh, so he doesn't have a, I think we got a blocker with the 9 for a side pocket bank. We have a blocker with the 7. So he is going to try to put him behind the 5-6. And... If he doesn't have a window, pretty much did that successfully. Yeah, I think so. Now, John is not a player we get to see very often. This is uh, the first time he's come to Steinway Billiards, but even uh, even uh, on some of the other tournaments that he can't make it out to sometimes uh, for whatever reason. Uh, so it's nice to have him here. Absolutely. I mean, John's a great guy. Uh, I know him personally. He's a friend of mine. And uh, I've seen him evolve a lot over the years. And mm -hmm. he's a consummate professional. Mm -hmm. He really uh, handles the game with a lot of respect himself and his opponents and the whole thing. And I think he's a great representative of, um, you know, of this sport, of this game. So, yeah, I mean, I love to see him around. And I love his game. I think he's a sh super strong player. Absolutely. I agree with you. And uh, I'd like to see more of him. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this really is a great matchup. I mean, of course, Shane is the favorite on paper, uh, and he jumped out to a 3-0 lead out of the gate really strong. But um, John is certainly capable of winning this match, and he's certainly capable of coming back if he catches a little gear. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited to watch this match. So one of the reasons why I wanted to step in, because this is really uh, a strong matchup between two of the, the right. young guns in the game. Right. And then, uh, you know, looking around, I know – you know, you and I have been around for a long time, so we, we do know, you know, all these spectators that are here, and we know who maybe some of the newbies might be um, and people who may not know so much about John because uh, he's, he's, he's not around much uh, in this area. Um, and although they might follow, you know, what, what billiards and uh, what tournaments are going on, and the players, they may not uh, get a chance to see him play. So they don't know what he is capable of uh, the way you and I do. Yeah, right. It's true. 
So that's it's nice. I mean, uh, I remember being like that. Where, where I, you know, I mean, this is I'm not going to age myself, but many years ago, <laughs> yeah, uh, when I was seeing uh, these top players and and players that I didn't get to see because I couldn't try. I was too young to go out to travel this much. Or, so. Um, I mean, of course, the media is doing a fantastic job and and putting shining light on this sport, you know, um, much more than it used to. Yeah. And, you know, there's there's a long way still to go. Um, and we're definitely moving in the right direction. You know, thank God the Internet came into existence because um, the Internet really opened up a whole, a whole new world of possibility and uh, ability to communicate and enjoy, um, you know, the game that we all love. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Shane, w well, there was a safe, and Shane failed to kick that ball, giving John ball in hand. Obviously something he wants. Uh, what player doesn't, you know? Yeah. Well, it's especially in this situation, being down 3-0, um, it's super important to gain a, little, you know, gain a little momentum, get back in the game, um, and being able to come to the table with ball in hand and complete control is really awesome, and that's the ideal situation for and, John to be able that, to come back. I agree with you. I, that's exactly what I was thinking, that, you know, you do have complete control at that point. You, you're putting that cue ball exactly where you want. You're, you're starting to set the foundation for the pattern that you see on how to get out on this rock. So, I mean, it, it very much uh, can put John in that momentum, you know. So, uh I'd like to see him, you know, get back into this match. I mean, not, he's he's trailing by three, and it's a race to nine. So, I mean, anything can happen still. Awesome. Well, let's see what happens. John right now doesn't I mean, doesn't seem to have any problems here. The balls are wide open. Right. No you clusters. Know, no, no nothing. Clusters. Uh, that eight is close to the side, but he is he, he's, he's still good. I don't see any big problems with the eight. I don't either, exactly, especially since you don't have to really do much. You could just, you know, make the eight, make sure you have a little angle to come off. Just make sure you're not on the rail. Of course. And that's really uh, that's really it. Nothing nothing uh, advanced, really, about this out. In the meantime, why don't you tell us a little more, because I know, obviously, you're very much involved uh, with the media aspect and how you bring information to people via your website and um, and your participation of the, your filming and everything that you do. So why don't you uh, tell us a little more about what you know as far as uh, what, what the rest of the media is up to? Yeah, well, that's cool. Um, well, this is a co-production between uh, AZ Billiards, AZB TV, and NYC Grind, nycgrind.com. And, um, you know, we're both media outlets in the world of pool. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a collaboration. So um, I'm very, I just want to start with, I'm, I'm very optimistic because I see a lot of, of the right people looking to work together. And um, I think that's what's needed in order to grow the pie, you know, really bring more attention and interest into the, the the pool world which is really the market the vertical however you want to call it but you know you could just pretty much say the pool world and um there are more and more people interested in pool um i think at a deeper level than than ever before i think that people uh care more about about playing at, like i really do because if you know if you look at facebook how many pool players are on Facebook sharing and updating their situation and their journey and all that stuff? And before, pool players didn't have an opportunity. They didn't have a voice mm -hmm. to be able to share with friends and family this world that most people couldn't understand. So I think that now, pool players having Facebook and, you know, with more, as you mentioned, more billiard media coverage, um, I believe there's more of a meaning. Like, why do I play pool? You know, like, it's not just about the money. It, it's so much more than that. So I think that the context. Nice break. Within, yeah, really Sorry. great break. <laughs> the, no, it's cool. But the context around this conversation pool is, is, um, is starting to make more sense to people where every a average player, like the everyday average player is starting to understand who the pros are. They're starting to learn more about them. And I think that um, little by little, um, 
pool players are engaging and entertaining and uh, and sharing and commenting and participating in, in, in the ongoing conversation in pool, and I think that's great. And, I, and I, I'm, I'm a big believer that uh, um, the right people in the industry need to work together mm -hmm. um, to be able to raise the bar because, you know, we can't, we can't do it all alone. I agree. And, uh, well, little by little, uh, I mean, it, it, it takes time, and it takes that dedication, and when people – when one person notices, they tell another, and then that person notices, and then that person might tell two or three people, and then, and it's a, it's a nice fine web we weave, you know. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you know, back in the day, um, it was what I call the, the less popular sport. You know what I mean? And it's only because, um, well, just things are different. Pool has evolved in so many different ways. It really has. And You're so, right. And so where people um, thought of, of pool as uh, seedy grounds or whatever they may have thought, um, they showing the dedication of these players and what it takes um, to excel the way they do and, uh, and be able to showcase that now um, in the media um, via tournaments or just even if it's just action. I mean, we hear about it all, you know, so-and-so played so-and-so, and, and so it, the word gets out, and it's like, wow, you know, uh, you might see a player. Oh, back in the day, you may have seen the player play and then won't see him for years later without uh, – what we have now with media and um, the Facebook and things like that, what people do share. Yeah. Um, you might see that same player years later, and and they've the, their caliber is as raised. Uh, they've gone up to three, four balls. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, but it it goes with what we said. What you just said it was uh, the sharing, mm -hmm. and um, so like I said, it can showcase all the hard work that they put into the, into. Uh, into playing the sport absolutely yeah and and also if the other thing i'm excited about is that quality content as john right now is aiming uh and down shooting the 10 ball he's trailing three games to one if he makes the shot which he did which nicely. he did he uh closes the gap three games to do Sorry, we're having a slight technical difficulty at the moment with the score, but let me assure you we are on it at the moment. So we are going to, um, I will verbally uh, tell you what the score is at the moment. It's three to two in favor of Shane Bamboni at the moment. Uh, we will get someone over here to fix the situation. Uh, in the meantime, I will keep that scoreboard off since it is the wrong score. Again, it is three to two in favor of Shane Bamboni. And uh, I had Jerry step away for a second, so I'm in the booth alone at the moment so that he can uh, reach uh, Al if he's around to come fix the situation. <laughs> I have someone next to me being very silly, <laughs> if you heard that. Um, okay, so John at the table. Again, he was uh, trailing three to zero, um, and has made a, a slight comeback with three to two. He's just trailing by one game now. 
and uh, play to push out. Now three all the way up on the short. Okay, on table ten we have Zion and John Schmidt on table ten. We have Tom Delfonso and Tony Woodlands. We want them. Okay, we fixed the uh, scoreboard situation. Just give me a second so that I can update and bring that score back to you guys. There we go. It's a nice kick on the one. I do believe he sees the one, um, but I don't know if he can cut that into the side, into the corner pocket right now. And we have. Table 23. Pardon me. Justin okay, we have Adam Jerry Spindle, back. 23. Thank you, Jerry, for getting all uh, to come fix that situation for us. Bergman, no problems, thank you. Pardon, your, uh, pardon the interruption. <laughs> okay, he did go for the aggressive uh, one ball shot in the corner. I didn't know he had that much of the ball to try to shoot that, but he did miss, but... Uh, John back at the table does not have that one in the corner. I don't believe it goes by that four. I like playing safe here. Uh, what do you like? Oh, I, I would definitely play safe here. Absolutely. Um, what I, you know, I really actually wouldn't do uh, too much with it. What I would do is um, try to bank the one. You know, back down towards like the 210 and uh, just leave the queue. I think he just called the one. Really? I think, he, I saw him point. I okay. think he just called the one. Maybe he can kind of cheat that pocket. Oh which yeah, is he would have to cheat the pocket, huh? Kind of dangerous. Tricky shot here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what Shane's got. Uh, John, excuse me. I'm running on one hour of sleep, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry, I'm shot. <laughs> I am literally shot. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm glad you're sharing your last hurrah here with I me mean, at the commentary. I'm, 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 I'm helping out right now, but <laughs> I, I, I want to lay down in the corner right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you on camera. <laughs> you crawled up under a table somewhere. Oh, We're going to get you. <laughs> I am really shot. <laughs> I, don't, right. I don't like to talk about it, but the truth comes out. I mean, I'm just shot. Hey. I admit it. All right. All right. <laughs> all right so Shane back at the table. <laughs> um, we're having a silly moment here. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> all right. Shane back at the table. Is, uh, wow. That was strong. That was pretty strong. Yes. Uh, a, a gimme shot here on, on the two ball. He moved that forward, which is important. That's the next ball in rotation. But uh, that was that was huge. That was a good shot. Absolutely. Shane's going to have to put a really nice stroke into this withdraw and a little bit of right hand English and come off that side rail and float out towards the center of the table. Uh, so. Nice call, G. Thanks. Jay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no problems here. No clusters. He's just over the ball, which he obviously can. Uh, he knows how to handle himself when the situation. Strokes it nicely. Five in the corner. Seven in the side. Yeah, he's gonna float up exactly. He's gonna make the five in the corner. Um, just float yeah, up he and follow. Could play, he could play the seven in the same corner, but this is much easier. Yeah, I think so, especially with a little bit of the angle that he had there. Um, yeah, no reason to do a lot of work. Right now, Sheen is just going to um, make easy work with that's it. That's the beauty you know, of boom. it sometimes. It's, a, it's a, The simplicity of it right. um, can make a run out like this so beautiful. 
Absolutely, he's looking, absolutely. It's like, like, a, like a dance <laughs> at the table. You make the ball dance. It is. That's actually, uh, it is a dance. I mean, you can see Shane's tempo. He's getting to a gear now. He's enjoying it. And he extends the lead for games to two. I don't think that man is ever not happy at the table, even when practicing. I mean, I've I've seen mm. him come by, and I've seen him play throughout the years. But, you know, like I, I was really observing him this week while he was here yeah. and just watching him, you know, hit balls. Uh, I mean, I, I wasn't like – seriously grinding at him to watch but yeah. uh, I just just to see his demeanor uh, just that in practice it didn't seem like it didn't seem like work mm -hmm. it was just like I am enjoying this yeah you know it was nice it yeah. is nice yeah I, I, he'll continue to do that and he's uh, very dedicated to you know feeling out the room and, and how, when he does come here and uh you know, like he did. He came this week and practiced and felt out the tables and things like that. So uh, it, it's very nice to see. And if you like something, order as well. All right, guys, Shane Van Boning in the house, Steinway Billiards, nice here for the Steinway Classic, Astoria, New York. Um, this tournament was initially started by William Finnegan, um, but it is uh, a Predator Pro-Am Tour event, and what an event this is. I think it's like 10 or 11 U.S. Open champions that are playing in this event. I mean, you really do have um, quite an amazing roster of players the as well as the, the young <laughs> yeah the creme of the creme as well as some of the young guns not like legends you know Absolutely. i mean not just legends that's not what i'm saying just not legends. just legends you have a lot of the young guns like justin bergman that's another person like john Absolutely. moore right that's all Absolutely. that we, we appreciate that you know came through Absolutely. and he's truly a great player and uh you know we're going to see a lot more of justin bergman and it was really awesome to have an opportunity to watch him play a little bit and we will, uh, for the world, I heard he's going to stick around for the world tournament. A lot of these players are. So, you, any, you know, you guys at, at home, if you doubted coming out to watch this, if you're able to come out, I mean, we have nine days of uh, incredible pool going on. And we, you know, this... Uh, 10 ball classic is followed by the 14.1 that's coming and uh, still we have players that are not even in town yet that uh, that that will be here like I mentioned earlier um, we have Corey Duell who's uh, in flight in from China oh wow he's coming in uh, and other players who couldn't make it to, to this uh, particular tournament mm -hmm. but uh, will be here for the straight pool so I mean it, like uh, it's just not the world class players just uh, it, it is other players uh up and coming players and and people who uh who we can appreciate uh what it is that they're doing with the sport as well so it's it's very nice to see it all happening yeah i agree all right john played a nice safe uh We'll see if he can get it. Great wow. shot. Great shot and position for the two. How do you And like the that? place erupts. I love it. The popo. Position for those of you who don't know. <laughs> Steinway Billiards really does have knowledgeable pool fans. The pool fans that are here, they know when to clap. They know when a great player executed a shot but executed at 75% or when they messed up. Like, they know. They know great pool. And I think that, um, I mean, I, I know that the fans here are really enjoying what's going on here. They're into it. They're, um, they're excited. They're talking about it between themselves. They're asking, you know, each other what they would do in these situations. And I think that's what it's all about. I love it. They're buzzing. And then people even... Uh even uh, the novice player can, can come here and buzz about it or hear them talking about it. I mean, 
they pick up little things here and there, and even just by watching, you get to learn something. You know what I mean? Absolutely. If you really stop to observe, you pick up stuff. You you, you watch someone shoot a shot, and you're like, why did they shoot it that way? And then, you know, analyze the table and say, hey, that was the better shot. And perhaps they may have shot it a different way. So, um, it's a definitely a learning experience. You can yeah. learn. Yeah. Well, learning, I think, is, I mean, watching is certainly one of the best ways to learn. I really, really sincerely believe that. That's because you I could, like, it. tell someone, yeah, you know, I shot this shot in this tournament, uh, you know, but actually seeing the person execute the shot is a whole different story. Uh, on that note, you heard in the background whoever is watching tournament director William Finnegan and he mentioned Focus the Parrow. Now there are a couple booths here who I believe are real big supporters of pool and um, I just want to give a quick shout out to. You have uh, Brian Russell and Little Focus running the Focus the Parrow booth and they do really great work with clothes like you know they focus on different uh, shirts and polos and uh, hoodies and stuff like that and what's really unique about them is um, you know they they capture each individual event uh, in a t-shirt or, you know, to you know, polo, right, or whatever to commemorate that event. And I like that. I think that's pretty cool. So shout out to Brian and another quick shout out to Jeanette Lee, who um, who's actually, this is the first Predator Tour event that she's played in. Tony's been trying to get her down for a long time and just timing and, you know, she doesn't live around here. She lives in uh, Indiana. So, um she hasn't really been able to um, commit to playing in an event. And this is the first one. And it's certainly a great one. So um, uh, it's awesome to see her here. And she has a booth. It's the Jeanette Lee booth where she's uh, offering some you know, different merchandise. Uh, she has this awesome baby uh, uh, baby widow cue. Mm -hmm. um, and like, you know, cue balls and pictures, stuff like that that she's autographed and I believe that uh, her, her booth is a big hit here, and I know that she's beloved because she's from Queens, New York, right, as right. you know. As I do know that. <laughs> she, was, uh, she was coming up uh, when I was coming up. Uh, the only thing is that, uh, you know, I was, I was younger and wasn't able to, to be in the pool rooms as much, you know, I... I gotta go home. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean. I was young, yeah. uh, so she, she she did come up with a lot of the same people uh, that both you and I. Yeah. Uh, actually, you came along a little later, uh, but but you well, know. Well, not really. You know when, when she started, when she really got good, she, she got good really with, with Gene Nengi. Yeah. During that time, and, mm -hmm. and that was the time when I was playing a lot, and mm -hmm. I was playing with Gene a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you know. I really watched her go from not really playing that great to being a world champion. You know, That's I watched awesome. that whole progression, uh, which was really, which was really kind of, you know, it was really cool. I mean, like, Jeanette and I used to go to tournaments like West End together. We were taught by the same guy, Gene Negi. Mm -hmm. So we would go to different places together, and sometimes, you know, we'd, like, I remember clearly we would look forward to reporting back to Gene how we did, you know. And um, I remember Jeanette used to have a goal she didn't just want to win she wanted to win by 7-2 or 7-3 she wanted mm -hmm. to feel like she dominated mm -hmm. and that's actually something that i learned from Jeanette. that's great yeah that's great that 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 uh that those little personal goals uh make all the difference sometimes when you think uh this is what you want to do or you already know uh this is how I have to do it. Or, uh, you know, maybe you don't want to say I'm going to accept uh, anything less than that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this shot here could be a little tricky because John's going to have to shoot this with uh, a good amount of right-hand English. And since he's jacked up like that, there's a tendency to put, you know, excessive spin, almost like a masse effect. Mm -hmm. So it's important for him to hit that well, and he struck that, sh struck that shot um, extremely well. Mm -hmm. And he has a nice angle to be able to make the five in a corner and bounce off the side rail and kind of float towards the center of the table. And from there, if he's able to get, you know, near the center of the table, you know, in my opinion, it's home free. 
Mm-hmm. It's a very good analysis of what's happening here, or possibly going to happen. <laughs> right, all right. But right now, John's perfect. He's in perfect line. He's not going to do too much with this. He's just going to make it kind of stop or draw back just a little bit. You know, sometimes people ask, uh, I mean, I've done quite a bit of commentary, and so I, I like to keep, even if people who are at home who are just as knowledgeable uh, may be able to recognize um, what someone is going to do, what kind of shot they need to do to get to a next ball position or whatever. But I, I do, for those who, who are watching who don't know, um, you know, they, they always wonder, like, oh, you know, how – how do you know what they're going to do? And uh, I don't always know. Occasionally, I might they they might choose something slightly different than what I would do. But that yeah. could, but for those who I wow, do John watch, wow, John turns it up. That's beautiful. Four S four. Wow. So go ahead, getting back yeah, to what you're saying. So um, so I, I for me I I say it's because you know I've watched these players so much um, and I see you know what it is they're capable of um. You get to recognize their patterns. You know what I mean. Not everyone's the same. Perhaps sometimes I might, um, I might be looking at, at a layout of a table, and I might suggest, uh, or I'm, well, not suggest, but I might uh, state whatever th option that I think I would shoot at the yeah. table, and then you know they might shoot something different. Absolutely. You know, so that that also goes with with teaching anyone who's watching at home and say, hey, you know. Uh, you know, John shot it like this, and Snooky said she would shoot it like that. Yeah. But guess what? Both options are there. Absolutely. Somebody, sometimes you're shooting a shot, and there is more than one option. Most, you know I mean, saying? yeah, abso absolutely. And that's, I think, where the art form of the game comes in, in like the player styles, I you agree. know? Yeah. I agree. But, uh, yeah, so that's why, you know, it's uh, we uh, we doing the commentary, you know, we know, obviously, what's going on at the table. Uh, we have our opinions and suggestions as to what uh, shots um, should be taken a certain way. But, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, they'll shoot it a different way, and we might, even we might learn something and say, hey, you know what, that shot was better. Or that shot was another option for me. Maybe not better, but it may have been another option for me. Um, so... But as far as what, what we know, what um, what they're going to do, uh, believe it, we're not mind readers, but <laughs> it's because we watch them and, and we recognize their patterns and say, you know, we know that uh, Shane may be comfortable shooting a shot a certain way or John might be able to shoot a certain way. And so because we've watched them throughout the years, we know we recognize their patterns. Yeah, it makes sense. Well, right there, John, uh, he went made right into the soup, as Ginky would say. Made it a little faux pas. Well, that was a huge error. Uh, huge, huge error because John really needed to keep that momentum going. I mean, he started out, I believe, at a old, was it old, zero 0-3 deficit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she started out with a 0-3 to three deficit, and now he tied it up at four games apiece. Mm -hmm. And... There was a moment where John had ball on hand, I believe, when we talked about momentum and gaining right. control, and he was able to get out of that rack, and right. he was able to regain his momentum. Absolutely. And he, re he took control of that momentum where he was now back in, in the control. Game. Right, right. right. He's he, back he, into it. I can't. Yes. Not, I, that, I, not that he was out of it. Let's, let, let me uh, correct that. It's not yeah. that he was out of it, but he had the opportunity to finally get into the match with Shane. Right. So now it's not 3-0. It was 3-up. You know what I mean? Yes. And so now we have a 4-4 game. And, uh, well, with an unfortunate scratch now and, and ball in hand for Shane, uh, you know, it, it's tit for tat. You yeah. know, right, right now we we just gotta see how how the rest of this plays out. It is a race to nine, and it is four four, but uh, both players obviously capable. And as you said before, even though Shane on paper is supposed to be better, um, doesn't count. I don't count John out because yeah, he can, he can do. Can't. I mean, obviously you're at the table. It's you and those balls, and you know he's got to make the same ten balls that that, that uh, John has to make so and vice versa absolutely so right here Shane has an opportunity to regain his momentum and 
uh, control of the match here. And if he's able to run these balls, which for Shane, this really is a Mickey Mouse out. Mm -hmm. If he's able to, uh, you know, finish the job here, he's going to he's going to take the lead again. Right. Five games to four. But is right now, this is uh, let's just see how Shane uh, gets gets out from here. Let's just see how he handles this. Right. Well, much like what we say, the shoe is on the other foot. This is like uh, the cue ball is in the other hand now because, uh, like you said, um, John got ball in hand and was able to uh, gain control and, and fulfill his, his momentum to get back into this game within the tie. Um, now, with ball in hand, Shane's got the same opportunity, and he did so very nicely and going in the lead once again, 5-4. to four. Yeah, I mean, this is huge. I mean, this is the feature match, Steinway Billiards. Uh, 64 great players that are all looking for this title. This this title means a lot to a lot of these players. And I know it means a lot to John, and I know Shane wants to win this for sure. Uh, and uh, both of these players have have a strong fan base, but definitely Shane is, Shane is, excuse me, Shane is definitely the fan favorite here because he spent a lot more time here and uh i really believe that shane is loved in new york i think a lot of people really like to see him around that's true look at shane's break man wow so powerful right and they, should, they should bottle that stuff <laughs> as gypsy would say give this man a parking ticket <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? he would say that right? he would say that <laughs> he would yell that <laughs> he would yell this out right now at the top of his lungs he would sure <laughs> <laughs> right and oh. uh for those of you who don't know uh mark pantovic gypsy um was uh one of the great characters of the game friend of mine friend of snooki and um, his name rests on one of these tables here because, uh, unfortunately, he left us a little too early. And he was certainly one of the great characters of the game. And, you know, my game was influenced by him. I think that he influenced a lot of people in New York in different ways. Absolutely. And I think a lot of people really enjoyed to see him around. He was a lot of fun. One of the greatest hustlers I ever met in my life. I mean, the, he <laughs> unbelievable. And, uh, he fun, he started it up, right? Like, he really was fun. He really is. I loved he watching really him play. He was, uh, I mean, yeah, he, I laughed he so was much. a show in, in, in himself. He was a show in he himself. He really was. He really I was. would laugh so hard. Listen, I, I remember, you know, seeing him walk into pool rooms and, uh, you know, this was like when I first met him, like within the first year or two that I met. I mean, like he would show up at a pool room and people were like, like stepping over each other to go and play him. Yeah. Um, because, you know, they just, it was like, I say to, to a lot of people, they either hated him or they really loved him. And they didn't hate him, hate him. You know what I mean? They just, like, they had a thing with him. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, oh, I hate that guy. No, you don't. You don't hate the guy. Um, don't hate, you know, he's a player. I mean, he would get in people's heads. He would try to, like, he was always... Um he was always on the job. <laughs> it really was. It was a job in itself. You're right. You're so right about I that. I mean, right? I mean, I don't know what the, what, how else to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, he would have loved this, too. And so would, you, you know, Ginky. I was oh. thinking of that, actually, before. Mm -hmm. Every time I see you, Snooky, I think of bo both of them, to be honest. I know. And it's a package <laughs> deal. There's, such, so a know, it's there's such a big reason for it. Obviously. Yeah, obviously. It really, because um. a lot of my, like, both of them, absolutely, a lot of my associations with them, definitely with you, too, because you were there throughout all that, you know, all the time in Chelsea and um, and all that throughout the whole thing. I mean, from my memories, you, you knew them even before me. So mm -hmm. with my memories as well, you were always like part of that, like that circle, and um, yeah, for sure. And <laughs> I know that they loved you and and all that stuff as well. So you know, we uh, we want to just keep them in our, our, our thoughts. Absolutely, and uh, we you know we did love them, and they're greatly missed. I was I, Ginky's always in my mind. I, I think about him often. There's so many things. Um, it, uh, here in pool and the stories that people share and things like that so he it's and the same thing with gypsy you know they, they're constantly uh, 
like being reminded uh, to other people that they, they left the mark here. You know what I'm saying? And uh, as a matter of fact, last night I was having a conversation with someone and I said, you know, I've been, I was like thinking about Kinky all day today because yeah. like, I know like his birthday's coming up next week yeah. or what would have been his birthday. Right. Um, I mean, it, obviously, technically it's still his birthday, but you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I was thinking about that and I know um, uh, it, sometimes I know that his family does like to watch these matches. So if they are online uh, watching, I want to say hello. Um, I know that they're like, planning a ba barbecue uh, this weekend sometime or whatever, so I'm hoping they have fun. And I'm sure they're doing that uh, also for in memory of him. Uh, like I said, his birthday would have been next week, so. Yeah. Well, awesome, Bill. Big shout out uh, to Ginky's family as well, who stood here. I mean, Ginky, for those of you who'd, who really didn't know, I mean, he, he was certainly a New York, a legend in New York. One of the greatest players in the game, uh, but certainly in New York, um, you know, in my opinion, I think he was, uh, I guess, wow. like, he, he was, sorry. he was, it's okay, he was like the bar, what happened there? Wow. He missed the, he missed the one, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, he, go he ahead. Mi he missed the one, which surprised me, um, and happened to knock that 10 ball in, it doesn't count because of this uh, format, it's called shot, of course, safety. So John back at the table, obviously. Okay, I'm so sorry. so Good. the ten comes up and uh, and John is shooting here. He has the option, but of course he's going to shoot it, mm -hmm. and he's going to try to go for the one in the side, I believe. Let's see what happens. I believe so. Okay, so like, what I was saying was Ginky's family was here. Oh, what I was saying before I even get into that part, for those of you who don't know, Ginky was I think, um, like he was the bar. He set the bar in terms of how a professional. Like, if people who came up in New York were to say, who would I like to, like, play like? Or, or what does it bar, mean to be right. a professional, right? Would you say that he set the bar? Like was I believe so. I mean, it, it all goes with what people thought about pool. Like, the same conversation of what I was saying before. That people have, like, their opinions about what pool rooms were like and yeah. how people... Um, you know, it, it is a less popular sport, you know what I mean? And, yeah, and that's why I sure. said um, bring, being brought into the light the way it has been through media and all that stuff or whatever. But before all of that, all we had was us. Yeah. It was us. And, and we had to show each other how we should uh, behave at the, at the table or just with people. And, and Ginky, you're so right about that because he absolutely showed... Um, how you should be uh, as in your personality, the way you're at the table, your demeanor, your professionalism, everything. Yeah. Um, you know, Ginky would talk to everybody. You know what I'm saying? There were people would come up to him uh, and uh, they might know, you know they, know, they don't know him, but they'll, they'll say, hey, you know, this, uh, whatever it is, that you're, you're such a great player, you know, whatever, and praise him and, and say, um, you know, I really enjoyed you playing, or things like that. And Ginky would just ball up in a whole conversation with this per with these people. Um, now, we're talking about complete strangers, not, and not everyone is comfortable doing that. Um, but it shows sometimes um, how you should be with something. Like some, a lot of these players, a lot of people think they're, you know, they're so unapproachable. I mean, they're, they're people just like you. You know what I'm saying? You know, you they, they're afraid. To, uh, they maybe don't want to ask for a picture or something. Oh, I don't want to bother this player or whatever. I mean, so long as you're not bothering them uh, when they're in the match, it's, you know, there's really nothing wrong with that. But um, Ginky was very personable and, you know, very witty. And, and uh, he was a character, too. You know, and y you're so right about what, what you said as far as, like, showing uh, that professionalism at the table and set the example for anyone who did uh, want to follow lead. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he definitely influenced me. So, um, absolutely. you know, definitely. I mean, Tony did, Frankie did in a lot of ways. Frankie's a tough player, different style player, mm -hmm. you know, intimidating style player. And, like, hit, playing with him as a young kid, mm -hmm. it toughened me up. It really did. So I learned a lot from a lot of different people, a lot of different players. Uh, and, uh, you know, the New York pool scene, it's been tough. 
And while we may have a reputation for straight pool and uh, just, you know, good nine ball and all that, I mean, the, the bottom line is, I mean, we've really had uh, a lot of really strong players that have come through the New York City area over the years. And um, right now it's really hot and I'm excited to see. And I'm excited to see these ribs, which just came in front of me. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to have to excuse myself. Just look, it was really a pleasure. Thank you very much for joining me. I, I enjoy the conversation. Hi, thank you very much. And before I go, I just want to um, one more time say that this is a co-production between NYC Grind and AZ Billiards, AZBTV. It's a pleasure to be teaming up. Upstate Al's been doing great. He's here. He's a workhorse. He loves the game. He's here. He's making sure... Everyone has the ability to watch the stream, and it's it's run right, and he's doing a great job. A big shout-out to Steinway Billiards and the staff. I'm about to eat some food. Food is good. <laughs> and uh, shout-out to Tony Robles, Finnegan, Gail, everyone from the Predator Nine Ball Tour, all the sponsors that are supporting the live stream as well as the tour, and everyone who's online watching and everyone that's here. So I just want to say thank you all. And I love you. Good Thank night. you, Jerry, for joining me. Okay, I will be joined momentarily by Al. Jerry will be off to have something to eat. Well deserved. He's been working very, very hard. Um, and I appreciate that he came in to join me and, uh, and uh, commentate and share some stories with me. And I am joined now by Al once again. Oh, hey. I had to get some uh, food in my go-go system here. I, I just had you. breakfast, believe it or not, at uh, <laughs> 11 o'clock at night. Breakfast. Yeah, Wonderful. Yeah, we've been busy all day. <laughs> 55 was staying alive. John Moore up at the table. Game 11. Having fun with JT in the booth, I guess? Absolutely. Good. Fall ball into the side pocket. The seven trickles into the upper corner. The one dresses up very nicely. Stop the rock right there. Perfect angle on the two once you pocket the one. And he's got perfect shape on the three. Wow. So, very nice. I, I do appreciate that, uh, that he was trailing by three to zip. Really? And uh, oh, just to update you on what's going on in this match. He, he was trailing three zip. Um, and Shane had given him ball in hand. Um, kind of letting him get a little momentum. Uh, and, and get back into the match. Before you knew it, it was 3-3, three, three, then it's 4-4, four, four, and now it's 5-5. Five, five. Wow, good match. Absolutely. I like my See, just slide over for the three ball. He's perfect shape, one rail, come back out for the five. This is like one-stop shopping. You could either go two rails back and forth or elect to go one rail and just come out to the middle of the table. Mm -hmm. The problem here is the eight. He's going to have to get a good shot on the eight. I think the eight goes. Yeah, it, it definitely goes but you don't want to touch any part of that nine as it goes down the rail. Absolutely so you want to get not. pretty good shape on it. Absolutely not. Just a little bit back or just stop it. Mm -hmm. Such a consistent stroke John Moore has, you know. And he's another one that travels all over the world. Yeah, I was talking to Jerry about how we don't really get to see him much. That doesn't mean he's not on the scene, you know, but it would be nice to see him more often. I did, um, I saw him, was it, yeah, like two days ago. He was here, and it has been his first time here. He came to check out the room a lot, like um, a lot of players might do, check out a room, especially being his first time. Um, he came in and was like, wow, I really like the room. You know, he checked out the tables, hit balls a little, and... Um, so we'd like to see him come down to some, some more events. Um, yeah. I, I had invited him the first uh, 10 ball classic, the inaugural one. And um, he unfortunately, he couldn't make Jerry. it. He had uh, plans to go to another tournament at the time, and, and he couldn't make it. And so um, it's nice that he made it out finally. And uh, I'm glad that he likes the room. It's my home room, and I'm glad that he likes it. And, um, well, we have a lead. In a, new, favor a new leader. A new leader. 
Um, but yeah, like I was saying, uh, it's it's it was nice to see that John finally made it out. I like I said, I did invite him when it first uh, for the first tournament, and he couldn't make it for it because he was in another tournament somewhere. But um, like I said, he came out. He does enjoy. He he did enjoy the room and. Uh, and so he's here and now on the live stream table, able to show you guys, uh, for those of you who've never seen him play, you know, he's very capable. He plays well. Yeah, well, you know what? I've, I've been watching John for a lot of years, and it's more or less like an acquaintance. Hi, John, how you doing? What's up? You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you're still in the tournament. I finally got the opportunity to sit down with John. We were up there having a meal the first day I showed up. Mm -hmm. And really, uh, he's, he's down to earth, you know, really nice, respectful young man. Uh, True-blooded champion like his mother and father were. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Same way. And we're going to have Larry Ross, the legendary Larry Ross, back in the booth. So we got the triple commentators here. I just came back in. I was outside warming up. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Larry, he's a uh, he's he's a little. Uh, I'm well, a, he's a I'm no. A corpse. <laughs> but it's, okay, know, I didn't want to say it. No. You, you got to have gloves. <laughs> you got to come with a snorkel coat. Don't laugh. At the U.S. Open, when I go there, I take a heavy winter jacket, scarf, and gloves. It's gets so cold there. Wow. Yeah, yeah freezing. Well, I'm glad you don't need all of that. No. Here. <laughs> so, well, I take a lot of medicine to keep my blood thin. That also keeps oh, me cold. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, I will. Yeah. Well, like I said, the, the, the air is turned up. There is a lot of people here, and if we didn't turn it up like that, then it, it could be a little sticky. Yep. And The know. crowd is unbelievable, the crowd that's still here. And, it's, uh, and they just keep rolling in. Yeah, I mean, even if it, night, people people leave and other people come back, yeah, other people come in. You know, it's like a rotation here. It's it's great. This is a funny position right here. Absolutely, you know, I agree. You with could that. bump you could bump the ten and then run into the eight three and push the three towards the left side long rail, but you got to control the cue ball to make sure you have a shot on it. Right. And if anybody knows how to do it, it's going to be this young man right here at the table. Mm -hmm. On uh, table 15, which you can't see, we have Warren and Jeremy. Warren Kempko, Jeremy Sosi, 5-5. Five, five. Nice. Well, that shot turned out real well for Shane. Now he's got the 4-5 combination. Just follow this up a little bit. The only thing he has to contend with is the 9. The 9 10. He's got to make sure he gets on the short side of that nine ball or below it mm -hmm. for the side pocket, but I'm sure he's going to get on the short side of it. Then again, I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. well, he, the way he's laying right now, it looks like he's going to play for the short side of the nine. And he's going to turn around and he's going to walk and he's going to look at the short side of the nine right there. Just surmising the position he has to be in off the seven to get there. Well, he also, in, in a, he doesn't want it, but he also has a combo that if he has to shoot it, which he will. Yeah, but it's not really wired. You know, it's not that it's impossible. No, but it requires a little work. Yeah. But I, I think, I mean, I, I don't think he's going to shoot the combo. I, I think he's just going to get position. He's just going to get position because he can... Once he hits this, uh, just how he gets on the six, he can leave a, a slight angle for the seven and the yeah, same and come, side. Yeah, come around. And behind. come around behind it, right. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's going to, you know, especially, it's, you know, John obviously making a statement and coming back. Mm -hmm. and, and now he's the new leader, although it's by one, but he's still in the lead. Um, obviously, he's shown uh, Shane that he can get the, into this match as well. He went up bow. See how he comes in. He's going to slide over for the nine. Oh, he's coming behind the nine. Yeah. But being on the rail like this makes it a little no, more difficult. No, he's perfect. He's perfect. Yeah, but he's got to dig now. Yeah, he's got to, he does. He's, he's got to, he's jacked up a little. He's got to dig. But making the ball be perfect position. You drag it side. over. There yeah. it is. 
Short side of the nine. Good shot. Great shot. Must be nice to do that so flawlessly. You know why? Because he's not me. <laughs> because you, he practices 40 hours a week. Well, oh, that's his, his job. job. <laughs> there he goes. Heard in stereo. Shane Van Boning tying this up at six apiece. Going to nine. And we're going to go down the line and thank a few of the sponsors that are on board. Of course, FA Clothing Line, Brian Russell and his son, Jonathan, on board. Gotham City Technologies. That's Ron Mason's company, the IT guy to go to if you got any kind of computer issues. Of course, we got to thank Lacasse, Lacasse Hybrid and yes. Custom Cues. Of course. Alongside AZ Billiards, the Tap League, Kings of Vapor, Simona's Cloth, and Aramis Balls. Live stream news group on Facebook. And of course, we also have to thank Steinway Billiards here in the story of Queens, New York. Shane Van Boney says, hey, that's enough of those commercials. Well, let's get right down to the game <laughs> as he's about, he is about to break in game 13. We're tied at six apiece. Listen to the break. I think that's the most I've seen a cue ball move on his break this whole set. Well, you know, he likes to play the cue and the one ball up table, mm -hmm. you know, on his 10 ball break. But the break's not working. He didn't find that spot. You know, he usually makes a couple of balls on his break. And he's really unhappy with himself. Well, not just He's unhappy. not devastated, but he's... No, <laughs> he's unhappy with his break well, right course, now. Of course, of course. You know, it's not working. Um, we all seen him play uh, Nick out there in Greece. And boy, oh boy, Shane was just going through Nick like a buzzsaw. And then Manny called me. <laughs> a buzz? A buzzsaw. Manny called me, and I thought, he thought Nick was going to come in for this one. Uh, I'll try to pronounce his last name, Nicolopoulos. Is that how you pronounce it, uh, Larry? I believe so. Yeah. Uh, I was looking forward to meeting Nick. A nice guy. Yeah. I met Played him. on the Moscone Cup also. For, I, met, uh, I met him a few times. He was a nice fellow. But just getting back to the point when they, when his break was on out there, it was just like, wow. It's like he was just been on an exhibition. This pool room is pretty close to our apartment in Greece. We have right. a nice little, we don't use it much, but it's there. Right. Must be nice. It is nice. I don't go anymore. My wife goes. I just don't want to be in Greece or on one of the islands and, and get sick. Uh -huh. I know I'll die. <laughs> Aww. Their, medi their medical structure is unbelievable. I don't want to get into it now. <laughs> there are a lot of, you know, have nothing to do with the people, just the structure. Have you ever been out to Crete? Yeah, I've been all over. Okay. Of course, the island of Crete, I mean, it's really gorgeous. Now, you got different parts of it, of course, but uh, really nice. But I recommend if anybody wants to go to Greece, they should also go to. Uh, now, is that that uh, go Greece light? No. Oh, I thought we were talking about that one. Well, they, ought to go, <laughs> they should go to Rhodes because Rhodes has a mixture, most of the time, of people from all over the world. It's a, it's a big island. In fact, if you go back years, it's where they filmed uh, the guns of Navarone. Okay. Okay, that's where they filmed it. And Anthony Quinn had a house there in real life. Well, Anthony Quinn was Greek. No, he was Mexican. Was he really? Yep. I always thought he was Greek. Mexican. Why is that? He was a Mexican. Why is he Mexican? He, he, <laughs> no, because he was in a, he was in a movie. Yeah, Zorba the Greek. Zorba the Greek, yeah, right, exactly. No. Anthony Quinn. I mean, he was in a lot of movies, uh, but I well, remember that. Anthony Maybe that's Quinn why. Anthony Quinn is Mexican. Anthony Quinn, if I remember my history correctly, how are we doing on the table? More important. But I'm, I'm thinking, uh, he married um, the daughter of uh, a big mo movie mogul. And his first movie was a movie called T-1000. 
much before your time, Slim. It probably is. They died with their boots on, with Errol Flynn, the story of, uh, supposedly the story of Custer, Custer's Last Stand. And he played Crazy Horse, the chief. But he was Mexican. Well, I never knew that. One of those? Oh. You, baby, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I'll give you my tongue. Oh my goodness, what is going on here? <laughs> no, I don't know. It's not I, after I 12 yet. You guys can't be doing that. I was chewing gum and she gave me the napkin. I he was he was uh, I was. yeah he was chewing I was. gum and I was. we I can we can hear all that. I apologize to everybody. <laughs> you have to forgive an old man. He doesn't mean it. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I handed him a tissue, and he thought his nose was running. Yeah, something. because the, <laughs> usually it does with the air conditioning. Yeah. It's cold. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Mr. John Mora. Jeremy tied the game 6-6. Six, six. It's been a run. I, it's just as much as on this table yeah. with the tie. Yeah. The only big lead was when uh, Shane had threes up, uh, three zip. Yeah. And this has been, and he caught up and made it 3-3, three, 4-4, three, four, four, five, 5 and now 6-6. Six, six. And we might have a new leader again. They're handing the lead off to each other. Yeah. There you have it, a new leader again. They are trading off leads. Um, and this goes to show you, just like I said before, that uh, that John is very capable of, uh, of battling John out. John is a real champion. I mean, not capable, he is a champion. And his game is excellent. Free live stream, folks, coming up August 30th through the, 11th, uh, the September 1st. Three tours are getting together up there in the... Providence, Rhode Island at a pool room called Snookers. If you've never been to Snookers or you want to play in that event, I would advise you to get in touch with one of the tour directors and uh, get your name in there because it's going to be a packed house. It's $2,000 added to the ABCD and $3,000 added to the Open Pro. Snookers Pool Room in Providence, Rhode Island. I will go there just for the nachos. By the way, Every, they have the best nachos. Everything on the no, menu every, is great. You're it's absolutely right about that. But I'm the not nachos, I know that. And they give you a massive amount, Listen, too. <laughs> and, and I'm not a small girl. I can appreciate that. Well, you know what? I couldn't finish that. <laughs> I can't either. <laughs> I can't either. But that's it's it's they're so good. <laughs> they are. <laughs> they're so good. I think there was three of us eating on the same dish. <laughs> and three of you can eat that dish. Yeah. It's, it's Actually, really Mike DeShane, and when I seen Mike up there, I said, Mike, what do you suggest? It's just, I need something quick because i got to get right back in the booth. He said, get the nachos. And I got these nachos, and all of a sudden I got a... A platter. A, a, it was me and Larry. That's you're right, Larry. We were in the I booth. I said, I had three. You had about eight, and I gave it to the girl. Get yeah. it out. <laughs> Larry said, take the rest away. We couldn't finish it. That's right. It was Larry and I up there. Right, that, yeah. that was the time I had it. All right. So if I make it, if I make it to Snickers... We're splitting nachos. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. We did a sushi thing one day. We have to do that again, too. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what. The sushi place to go to that uh, is on the other side of George Washington Bridge there, Monado's. I, I, man, I, oh, man. I'm oh man. not a sushi person. I am. I lived He's in Japan he, he, I, I, for a while, yeah. you know, in business years ago. I, uh, I spent four months there. Not my cup of tea. I used to like the noodle shops in the subway. That I liked. Them. Okay. But uh, I'm not really a sushi, and I. Well, you haven't. Maybe you haven't tried the right sushi yet. Have you tried it? At all? I've eaten uh, in some of the best houses in Japan. Places where Caucasians normally never go. Taken by people that I did business with. Right. Not for me. Oh, it's not I your cup of tea. It's not your cup. What do you like? 
How about I, that? He I doesn't like I, anything. I, I don't, I don't <laughs> he likes the pie. Look, don't say that. He likes the pie here. Apple pie, but he has to have a small piece. Yes. Yeah, so they, they bought him a, like a personal <laughs> size. He just likes a snack. Pie. But do me a favor. If you're coming to my house for dinner, make sure you snack before you get there. <laughs> 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 All right, John Moore is in trouble here. I'm just throwing these comments into liven, liven it up a little, people. <laughs> That's all. We get a few laughs. After all, hey, we're having fun. Win, lose, or draw. It's a great tournament, and why not enjoy all the way around? Three rail, kick it behind the five. The five goes to the opposite side of the table near the nine. He's calling it in the side pocket. It's mm -hmm. a good possibility, but what happens is. If he doesn't make the five ball and the cue ball should drift down behind the 10 or behind the seven area and place, you know, in other words, get, safe, get a safe. Mm -hmm. Shane has the option of giving it back to him because this is call shot, call safety. So he did call the five in the side. Almost one in the corner. And Shane's wow. not giving it back to him no, that of much. Course he can not. Bet. <laughs> He's is, never giving that back. This is one stop, 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 and you're out the door here. I like playing safe rather than calling the shot. But, uh, you know, you feel aggressive, you feel aggressive. I personally would have called a safe there. But well, you know what? It was a good call by John because uh, yeah, if he would have made it, right. and, you know. Then, then he'd look like a hero. I mean, it, uh, it, it would have been Shane great. Said, well, you didn't call. It's my shot. Right. You know? Right. So it's a good call. It is. But I didn't you know, say he was wrong. I just, if you, if my you do personal get, thing. If you do get trapped up, you know, then, you, right. then you're stuck if you don't call it. So it's a good way to play it. And it looks like we're going to go to 77th Street in about three minutes here. I had him at two and a half minutes. I don't know about three minutes. Yeah. See, Shane's got a good momentum about him. He shoots a good game. When he's punching gears, the next thing you know, there's five racks gone, and he looks like he just woke up. And he was here late, by the way. Mm -hmm. I was here, too. He was in action last night. Mm -hmm. He was here till about one, he told me. Yeah, yeah he was. I was time. here. Yeah. I was here last night. I left, uh, I called you, out when I got home. Yes. You and to find out what the score was. Yeah, yeah. I said, game over. Yeah, it was over. It was close to it. Well, it's 21-19. I'll tell you this much. Shane did come out on top. I'm not going to mention what the game was. No, but no. Yeah, let's not talk about that. <laughs> but but it, it, was, it was enjoyable. In, in short, oh, there was, was there was a little match. action it here. Was, it, it was nice. Great to watch. Great to watch. Can't sure. say what he gave up and wait because he, well, may, he may have to play somebody again in action. Well, we don't want to. We don't want to say no, who no, or no, what was never, the game. Or it was just enjoyable to watch. Much, very enjoyable. And it and it happened to happen late yeah. last night. Yeah. So there you have it. <laughs> so you know he leaves. He leaves here about one one thirty, and he's got to settle in. And now we're going to go beyond one one thirty soon enough. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's been a long. Well, Shane's been in the city for a few days now. It's, it's been long nights for him. Yeah, I, I mentioned earlier that he'd been here all week and uh, checking out the tables. And I mean, he's been here before, but the, the, you know, the, obviously, the thing for him to do is come in and uh, check it out. Well, the last time Shane was here, he was—he uh, had a group of people in the back corner there, and he was teaching them the, the ten ball break because everybody was interested, regular local players, and he, he spent some time with them teaching them the break. Mm -hmm. I think he, it looks like he took, he weakened a hair and he's not going through like he did before. Full That's, punch. Yeah, right. with that last punch. He's punching, but not as hard. Here we got Warren up, 7-6. He won, so he'll be up 7-6. Do you know what happened with the Earl match that I couldn't see from this corner? Earl, Earl won. Earl, Earl won. Okay. No, I didn't yeah. know. And tomorrow okay, it's, it's the USA against Russia tomorrow. Yeah, he plays <laughs> Stalib tomorrow. Eugene Stalib wow. is his first match. Yeah. Stalib plays with that 32-ounce uh, 
Russian Q. <laughs> I don't know how he yeah, does he it. He plays good. I'm gonna have to take a feel at that at that Q when I see him. That's about 27 ounces. It's Feels like it's made wow. out of metal. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Sorry. Had to clear my throat for a second. <laughs> okay. I like that choice. Unfortunately, it didn't. He it didn't come out as he wanted, but I do like that choice that he tried he to He wanted to try to put it on the other side of Some the Some of the players, oh uh, uh, Shane elects to take his break. Let's give you some of the pitches of some of the players that are going to be playing in the 14.1 and some of the players that are actually playing in this Steinway Classic. Uh, some of the pitches that we put together. So as the players are on break, we're going to stand by. Yep. Just as we glanced over there, you have Tony Robles playing um, Tommy D'Alfonso, a.k.a. Shorty. And it looks like John Smith's playing on the adjacent table. I'm not sure who he's playing. Uh, we're not going to have time to pan over as uh, Shane makes his way back into the arena. a slow roll safe keep the cue ball behind the eight good choice See John Mora called the side pocket on the left side of the table with the one. Many a times we kick off of this rail, the balls tend to go that way. So if he does wind up safe again, and you can forget about that, Shane has ball in hand. What a crucial time to give your opponent ball in hand when you're tied at 7 7. And the next one's on the hill. Larry yep. Ross, yep. Larry Ross stepping right back in the booth. Yeah, that, this is like an exercise for Shane, the way they're lined up. Right. 
Well, you know, he's got to he's got to contend with you know keeping you know you got that two ball, the three ball, the four ball, the six right there. You know, you got to. I mean the uh, seven. You know, you got to contend with that. You know, you got to be somewhat of a mechanic and use some pinpoint precision here. Because, you know, you got to get on the three to get down to the four, you know, after making the two. And see, that's what he's looking at now. You know, if it was... Mm -hmm. If it was, uh, if it was that easy, you know, he would be up there swinging already, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, he's got a little work to do here. Weighing out his options is uh, well. He, it's okay, but you still got to get there. Look, look, see. Yeah. That that four balls was concerning him. I mean, getting the two ball into the bottom right hand corner is easy enough, but getting the angle on the three to get back to the four. I think he might the, he might play the two in the other corner. I mean, he might play it in the other corner because of that being tight. He did. See. He draws straight back and just played a three in the same corner. That's what Shane likes, but um. Shane missed it. But now here's the option. Shane played the two ball and didn't make it. Mora. John Mora has the option of giving it back to him. He won't give it back. Well, do you like jumping at this too? No, but Shane is taller than John and can reach it easier for a jump shot. Well, I seen something very interesting last night where somebody, in fact, it was Shane, <laughs> where he actually pushed know. out. He pushed out a little further than this, a jump. where a regular person couldn't handle the jump cue. But Shane's jump cue breaks down into so many different pieces that it was long enough for him to jump over the ball. How sharp yeah. is that? Size makes difference in this game. All right, John Moore it going does. to the air here with his uh, jump cue. You know what? I give this back to uh, I give it back to Shane. At seven seven, I'm not taking a chance at, uh, at going after this, and that's exactly what John Mora does. He yeah, turns around, he says, "Shane, he can't get show to me." It. He can't get to it. Well, it, you know, if you weigh it out, is, is it worth it? I mean, yeah, you can make it. It's a makeable ball, but you know, no, you can miss it too. You're not going to yeah. hit this ten out of ten. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean. They, they will. No, you're not hitting this 10 out of 10. 7-7, seven, seven, Jeremy and... Uh, now Shane's up on the board here. Yeah. See, he can reach it. It would have been tougher for John. Not saying that it's not makeable. It's makeable. But now you got to control the cue ball after making it, too. Why the three's you know? open. You taking a chance if you're John Mora? When your opponent, no, when no you I wouldn't shoot it. No, absolutely. I think that's the right call what he did. And this might be the it's hard for him to shot get of the match. His leg okay. the in the this, right might, this might determine the set right here. This shot. With, with position. Almost. Almost position. See, John couldn't have reached that the way Shane did. If he could have, he would have played it. Good shot, no, no, weather, no matter what. But, uh, Great shot. This is this is it right here. Corner pocket. No choice. Well, he can roll up safe on the six ball if you want. Yeah, he to. might play safe. Yes. No, he's cutting it in. No, he's thinking about. He's cutting it, but he's thinking about. You don't make it. John's on the hill. And there you see the official Steinway shirts. Right. It's the uh, third annual Steinway Classic, uh, produced by FA Clothing Line. 
And you can get in touch with Brian Russell. He told me on his Facebook page, Brian Russell. And uh, you could work something out if you uh, are interested in purchasing one of his time wear shirts. Nice shot. Great finish. Seven ball into the side pocket and the six drifts down towards the bottom left hand corner. And then it should be to the hill for Shane. Hmm. He's drawing it. Oh, he's trying to hold the cue ball and the six ball at the same time, and that's gonna cost. He shouldn't have I don't know why. He knows everything about the cue ball. I don't know why he drew the ball. He probably had Straighter angle than we could up, actually yeah, I thought I thought he was gonna bring the he, six no, down. He rolls it up, he ends up with the six down that far corner. Yeah. But he knows what he wants to do. He's calling the uh, side pocket here. Yes he is. Cross side. Oh my goodness. He's an unhappy camper right now. All champions would be. Interesting here. He doesn't have a pocket for the, I don't, maybe the eight, does the eight pass? No, the eight doesn't pass. She came short. Well, he played it with the reverse. I think he's playing for the bank and that's yeah, what he's yeah, doing. He's yeah. banking this into the corner pocket. Yeah, it, you know, it don't have to go for sure. Beautiful. I forgot he won the bank pool one year down yeah, in Derby, Derby City. Yeah, I was going to mention that. Yeah. yeah. Well, he never touched the rail going in that pocket. I'll tell you that much in a four and a half inch. Banked that straight in. Oh, what happened there? Oh, he, he's good. He's good. <coughs> Snookums is back in the booth. Almost. Well, I mean, almost. Snookums. <laughs> Snookums is live as John Mora takes his game to the hill. Leads Shane Van Boney. Eight to seven. Great match. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Great, great match. I love it. Yeah. Game for game. They've been... 7-7 uh, seven, seven over here. Yeah, there's another tight match over there. Warren, with, uh, Warren Kempo and, uh, and Jeremy Sosa. I know you like that. And it appears that John Very Mora. Good. Well, I like Jeremy. I always did. I know him a long time. Mm -hmm. And he's a dedicated, dedicated player. John Mora looks like he took his break. And Shane's going to sit there and dwell on that bank shot that uh, he come up short on. Is that what happened? I, I took a break, so I, I yeah. don't know what Yeah, he, no, he caught the corner. 
Oh, did he? Oh. No. He wound up with a six-seven combination, then got made the seven on the, in the side yeah, pocket, surprised. and wound up funny on the six. Yeah, I thought he'd roll the shot. The cue would come up the table, and he'd shoot the six down that corner. Yeah. Right. He tried to hold it for the side pocket. That's what finished him. But in any case, Shane tried to bank the six ball because he got funny on it. And wound up hitting the point of the side pocket, spitting the six ball up table. Oh, I see. Leaving John with a shot, and John wound up getting out on it. Cap capitalizing on that mistake. Yeah. Well, you're supposed to do that. You know, when, it, when you're up at the table and somebody yeah. makes a mistake, you're supposed to do that. Yeah. Right about that. You're supposed to punish him. And once again, folks, some of the faces that are going to be here for 14.1 and some of the faces that are here in this tournament. Uh, players come from all over because it's back-to-back -back action. And believe me, there's a lot more faces than this at the tournament. We just didn't have time to upload them all. There's Duke, and I know that's his wife. They just came back from a lovely vacation. Florida. Nice. Warmer than here at the moment, right? <laughs> yeah, a bit. I understand JP's down in Florida too, and you're tuned in, Jay. We're saying hello to you. Who? Thanks for all the graphics. JP, the gentleman who actually made that Predator logo. I have trouble pronouncing his last name, Parameter or something. How do you pronounce it? Works for Palmer easy. Takes Palmer a lot of photos. TA. Yeah, he's French, right? Yeah, Palmer yes. TA. I understand he's in Florida, so if you're tuned in, wishing you all the best. And we have a lot of great players sitting with the spectators at the moment, you know? Yeah. They're sitting there watching these matches, and uh, I can see Johnny sitting there. What's the story with uh, Tony and who's up? That's Tony and uh, Shorty, uh, Tommy D'Alfonso, a.k.a. Shorty. Who's uh, up? Providence. Uh, who's up? Uh, I'm not paying attention to that match uh, as John Moore makes his way back into this arena. And just to bring you up to date with the score, this is John Moore is on the hill. A lot of cross wires here. I don't want to. That's you and the noodles. <laughs> Are you in the soup? Yeah, I'm in the soup. <laughs> oh, I was in the soup. Yeah. You're in the soup. Mm -hmm. We're all in the soup. In soup it is. <laughs> Nothing like letting your opponent roast when you reach the hill, huh? <laughs> well, it's a tactical move. Do you, do you think so? Yeah, by, by, <laughs> by a lot of players, you know what I mean? I know and Shane I, is roasting about that six ball right now. His, uh, He's roasting about the break. His, his body and language his at the too. moment. You see that body language? Yeah, yeah. I don't blame him. No, but he's uh, just as dangerous if uh, if John gives him an another opportunity. Cuba. And he just did. He just gave him that opportunity I was talking about. You got to kick into the corner. Kick pocket. into the corner, exactly. With the ball. ball in hand. And, well, he's got a great opportunity. The only problem I see is that 5 8. Well, I can tell you one thing. If he reaches the hill, this crowd is going to erupt. Oh, absolutely. Uh, this will be, what, the second hill-hill match that we had here. Back-to-back hill-hill matches if, uh, if uh, Shane can uh, run this table out. Like I said, the only issue I see is that five and eight. Um, but it looks for The five and the four ball up at the uh, corner there? Is, is that the four? That's the five and the four. Oh, is it a right four? Okay, I'm, yeah. I'm o I can't see the screen Yeah, from the too side, from it's kind of tough. Um, I'm sitting a little away from that, no. that screen right now. But, um, well, we'll see what he can do with it. You know, he's got a favor 
the side of like where the 10 is to make the four, in other words, have that cut shot on the four so you can go around the seven and come back for the five. You don't want to get, unless he gets dead straight and you can just draw it back. Right. If, if that's what he chooses to do. But you don't want to nudge that five. See, if he shoots down the right side of the table and goes around the four, I mean, goes around the seven after pocketing the four, he could come right back there, but he's going to stop the rock. He's going to try to get straight as possible on this four ball and draw it back for the five. Mm-hmm. That's what he's looking at. Let's see where he is after this. I'll tell you, it's the right. Oh, he, he's definitely stopping the rock right there. Oh, I think he tried to break it. He couldn't get it straight on it, but now I it think, I think he tried to break he it. Might, he might end up here playing, no. playing the five uptown. He wasn't trying to break it out. He's no. playing that five ball in the same yeah, he pocket. Is, he is going to draw it. No, oh, he nudged great. it. You see, that's the problem with no. not getting straight enough. And safe. And safe. That's why I like Stone the shot. Safe. That's why I like the shot going around the seven and coming back for Excuse five. Me. Excuse me. My opinion on that, you should have made the four. Excuse me. <laughs> made the four. <laughs> and kept the cue under the five. Shoot the five up under the ten into the corner. Easier said than done from here. Absolutely. No, uh, but that that's safer. He had, he, that, had a, he had an angle though. That's I mean, a safer could, shot. See, if he would have just elected to favor the right side of the table just enough where he can cut the four in the upper right hand corner, he could have went around the seven. Well, I think he I think he five. looked at that, and I don't know if the four would have. He might have cut it into the uh, long rail. Mm -hmm. that we we don't know exactly. No, it would have went. It would have went if he, but he had to get right well, on. Well, whatever. But that shot would have, should have, could have. You know, that shot was a possible shot. I mean, who are we to say? To I just Van say, you know, when in doubt, punt. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we would have did. <laughs> Which is why we're sitting here. <laughs> That's why we're on the side and they're on the table. <laughs> Does he go to the air? Uh, I don't think so. He may he, go, he's yeah, he's he cross-banking this into the cross side. He's, he's calling it. He's probably going to call it. He's already measuring it out. And he does not go into the air. He's going to the rail. He's, he's cross-banking this. He right also has to keep try. the cue yeah. away from the corner on this. If he draws it, he may not make the bank. And they think he's gonna he, he's gonna cut into this rail though. Well, we're like kids in a candy store right now, sitting on the edge of our seats. Larry can't sit still. <laughs> Larry scoping the room. <laughs> his neck is growing like a giraffe. He's trying to get <laughs> scores on every table. Oh, enough. he's kicking into it. Yeah, he said he's gonna kick into. He's gonna cut into the rail with a kick and oh. probably draw it. Because oh. he had to. He he had to hit it with uh, with outside to to oh. uh, to cut the angle shorter. Now. John probably, he, he might be able to cut this in, back cut this in. Do you like playing to the bottom of the six ball yeah, though and shooting it past the side pocket? He banks very well though. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he was the bank champion. Well, he yes. might cut this in though. He's cutting it in. Yeah, what I'm saying is, is he going to like getting below the six and shooting oh. it up past the side pocket? He'll do what he has to, to win. <laughs> Look at this ball run. I'm saying. Oh. Is the six frozen? Is he going to like shooting this past the side pocket? Now? Yeah, you got to watch. Sometimes the tits on those side pockets stick out. You can't let it hug the rail. Here we go. This is the shot that's going to determine the set right here. See? Hey, the tits stuck that's out. That's exactly what I thought. You know, he's not going to like it, but being See in the that? position that he was in, you know, cutting that five ball, and he had no other option no, but yeah. to play that six up that way. No. The tit sent the ball out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying from the beginning of the five. Yeah, right. Is he going to like playing the six up the rail? Any, in any case, that might be the shot that determined this whole set. You know, Shane Van Pony oh, double getting hill, a double yeah. hill and breaking. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, nobody has to like it. He'll give this next break if he gets yeah, out here. He's going to pump it up. Everything he's got. Yeah. I see Anna and Manny. 
Yeah. The owner's here sitting mm -hmm. at one of the VIP tables enjoying a drink and a meal. And then well deserved, they worked wow, their what a tails nice shot. off Great. all day long, making sure everybody in here is taken care of. Great shot. This is he's just gonna make this back and forth and he's gonna be out. And the second string of waitresses and come into place so oh, they can take he, a break the cooks. He's better. It's hard to see the angle, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Double cheese. Hold on to your hats, folks. We're going 30,000 feet up straight in the air and leveling out at Hill Hill. Oh. There you have it. He almost rattled that one. Yeah. Wow. That, that, went, was that went in kind of funny. A little bit of elbow lock. <laughs> a little bit. Mm -hmm. Double cheeseburger, folks. Double cheeseburger. Lacasse hybrid cues. Lacasse custom cues getting on board. Yay. What up, State Al? Gotham City Technologies, the IT guy, Ron Mason. AZ Billiards live stream news group on Facebook, all about live streams. The Tap League, Kings of Vapor, Simona's Cloth, and Aramis Balls all getting on board. We're loving it alongside NYC Grind. And Shane says, hey, how about FA Clothing Line? The official Stein Lake over Classic here, it looks shirts. Like Juan's going to the hill first. Well, we got a hill hill here, and Shane Van Boney set to break. He's got to maintain control, and he did oomph it up a little bit there, Larry. Yep. But nothing drops. No. Wow. And look at this layout. Safe. No shot, though. No shot. Yeah, he said he gave the call safe. He's trying to find the best possible push. <laughs> Hopefully not leave him a push that leave him uh, any trouble. And vice versa, because the machine returns it. What do you like? I like pushing at the moment, especially since it's hill hill. I like, I like pushing to another tie up. I this like pushing to another table if I'm playing Shane Van Boney. Because <laughs> you can't I mean, leave him anything. No, I know, but if you push and tie up a ball, because there's no clusters. Uh, the the one and seven is the only thing that's happening there, and you know there's just like really nothing else going on. Troublesome on the table. So if he pushes. That's what he did. Except he yeah, laid it in. Yeah, he, I kind of don't like how it laid out for no. him. Well, he tried to push it to take, well. Well, Shane's got a bank to break it up, by the way. I he mean, don't have to bank it. He doesn't it. have to, but. He can play him safe right he's there behind the No, he's going to bank it. He was the bank pool champion the year before. So, <laughs> right, so. <laughs> Well, he was. Look where the two and five, there's got a problem up there, whether it's wired or not. It looks like it might go to five, looks like it might go, yeah, but yeah. Do, do you take the chance of banking at this ball instead of giving yourself some more opportunity and just play safe behind the seven? No, yeah. He yeah. might play the cue ball by, by the two five. I can call the five. Don't call the five at all, just play safe. Call safe. Yeah, play it, played safe. Play it behind the seven. Good shot. Now you can have fun with this. Sure. Jump it, jump it, do whatever you want. Oh, kick off the top rail, maybe. Maybe you get lucky. One, three, uh, five. You're getting lucky now. That's why you played it safe. Uh, you know.
It's like we're just sitting here waiting what what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen. <laughs> But the only thing, I mean, look at this. Yeah, the only good thing was that he he successfully hit the one, and that he kind of left him on top of the three a little bit. Well, what what really does that mean? mean? And he's dead straight <laughs> in. He's dead straight in. Yeah, that means he can't take the cue ball out for the two. Right. That's why. That's my point. <laughs> you bank the one towards the eight ball, sitting at the bottom, short cushion. Oh. And you bring the cue ball back up behind the 6-10 area. Maybe. I like that. I like that. You're hired. Okay. Can you coach all my matches? I could be fired. Look at what Shane's looking at. He's looking at Massé and possibly hitting him with a Massé around the three at that length of a table. That's a hard shot to judge. In other words, he has to roll up on this one at least six inches or more and then play a long Massé to make the 2-5 uh, combination if it's wired. Boy, oh boy. I've seen him do some extraordinary stuff, and it looks like by, well, the, by the expression on his face, that's what it looks like he's going to try. Well, if he had another uh, he'll be able two tomorrow. inches uh, uh, away from that three, it would obviously be yeah. better, but he's yeah. like like an inch and a half from that yeah. three ball. He's literally like all on top of that thing. He can uh, say the ball well, though, just like he does everything else. You just say the right things, don't you? Well. <laughs> he was a bank champion. And he uh, was. <laughs> Larry, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> well, here we go. This is the shot. Never mind the Marseille. <laughs> this is the killer right here. <laughs> See, he's looking at Mass saying this, but look at the length that yeah. he has to Mass say it. That, that one ball is just going to creep up a little bit more. He's shooting over the three. You know, if he rolls up high enough, Snooks, he could bank, bank it. it. You well, ain't shooting for my money, it, Larry. No, you're no. never shooting I know, you're for kicking my money. It. No, not you're taking this. that shot. No. What are you talking about? He kicking makes off the, the one, long rail and going no, into it. No, makes the one and rolls up and then shoots the bank off the corner of the side pocket right into the two. Is that you a kick? You are not shooting huh? the That's a kick. That's exactly what I said. Yeah, well, that's a kick. <laughs> Listen, play the one Allow, you the need eight. More, you need more pie. Is the shot. I don't smoke. <laughs> not pot. I said pie. Oh, my God. I did not say that. <laughs> that's how tired I am. You really oh, are. I know. He needs a nap. I need sleep. Never mind a nap. <laughs> it's all good, Larry. That's oh. such a, that is such a hard shot. And a shot in the side. That is such a hard shot. Wow. Now, this is no cherry picker either. Can't see where it's lying. Yeah, I mean, got to be careful, you know, you don't hit the tit going into the side here with the one. Yeah, well, that's what they call all, it. All he has to do is roll up. That's all he has to do. He'll, but watch the six. You don't want to roll up too no, far. You of course, make the one. Yeah, Period. but he's got to watch the six. He doesn't roll the cue behind the six like, like this. Oh yeah, yeah. He's okay. He's okay. Yeah. Are but you sleeping on the job, sir? No, I am. But he's all right. <laughs> he he's said, right. "I am." But <laughs> <laughs> let's assume. Got to be real careful here, though. Well, he called it already, so he. Yeah, obviously but you don't want to lose the two. No, I think he'd be all right because he's kind of cutting the two into the five. Cue ball is just going to go to the short round, come out. I, I think he's going to be good. <coughs> I think he's going to be all right. He had, he had, he had, a, lot, he had, a, he had a lot more than we thought. Right. Because I thought even if he had to cut that. To uh, the Cubo will just bank off the, the short rail and, and he'll be fine. But he, he had more he had more of that shot than we thought. Shooting this lefty. Nice stroke, lefty. I mean, he's pretty straight. Just keep that stick in your left hand and shoot again. Well, no, he might be able no, to reach he's, this. No, he can reach this. He's tall enough. I wouldn't. I'd have to shoot this lefty.
Look at this. Mm. Pretty weak stone now. Didn't have to do much with it. No, but it's a weak, he hit a weak stone. If he hit it harder, he might have been on, right on the floor. He's still good. Really good. Shane is one unhappy camper, right now, I'll tell you. He knows that one ball. Uh, he, he had his doubts, you know, he changed his mind a couple of times. And no, the one ball was a tough shot. It's Tristan tough. Just it, it made it even harder that he's on top of the three. Yeah. Yeah, you, you know what I mean? Just, just make the one. He's yeah. human. Yeah. What he is. I still think make the one and let it roll up so you don't have to work the cue ball and then try to kick off the side rail. Very meticulous and deliberate shooting right now. John does not want to give this back to him. No. <laughs> You'll just be cutting your own throat. Yeah. That's for sure. Come draw it back Double hill. under the nine. Coming around, I think. a nice touch on that It really shot. was because he another two rotations right. and he's behind the ball. And the loser of this will be eliminated at the Steinway Classic. Keep that in mind and we'll get word right back to you who's up next. But first John Moore has Look to shoot this, this from the 50 wow. yard line. Rock on the hard place. He's got like a 55-45. You gotta hope you don't get elbow lock on this one. <laughs> He's going to the corner with yep. it. Yep. Bottom right hand corner. John Mora for the win. Or defeat. Wow. There you have it. Wow. Johnny Moore eliminates Shane Van Boning out of the Steinway Classic. We're going to be right back with another match, folks. Please stand by. We'd like to thank Snookster and Larry Ross for sitting in. The AZB TV booth will be right back. <laughs> 